Similar to classical digital circuits, quantum circuits are an abstraction of some set of physical operations that modify the state of a set of qubits. And just like classical circuits, which are implemented using digital gates, quantum circuits are implemented using basic operations that we call quantum gates. So let's go back to our model of the spin of an electron representing a qubit and see what could be the potential set of physical operations we could apply to it to obtain a desired outcome. So let's say we manage to capture an electron, but we have no idea where its spin is pointing to. So we're going to denote that with uh, a, a question mark inside our ket symbol. And we want to make sure we prepare our electron with its spin pointing in the plus Z direction. And then we want to perform some other operation to make it point in the minus Z direction. And then we want to perform a measurement, which if we perform this set of operations correctly, should guarantee that the electron always deflects in the minus Z direction. So let's start with you know, as we said, an electron where its spin could be pointing in any of all possible directions in, in all three dimensions. And if we want to guarantee that this electron has its spin always pointing in the plus Z direction, well, one thing we could do is send this electron through a stern gerlach apparatus with its magnetic field pointing in the plus Z direction. And as we know, regardless of where the spin is pointing, the electron will always deflect either upwards or downwards. Now the probability with which this happens depends on the initial orientation of the spin. But if we, for example, just discard any electron that deflects downwards, we are guaranteed that anything along this path will be an electron with a spin pointing in the plus C direction. Now, the second operation we want to perform is to flip the spin of this electron from pointing in the plus Z direction to point in the minus Z direction. And the way we can do this is if we apply a magnetic field along a direction that is orthogonal to the spin orientation, the electron undergoes what is known as Larmor precession. So if we apply the right magnitude of the magnetic field for the right amount of time, that will cause the spin of the electron to rotate and then we will have it pointing in the minus z direction. Now lastly, if we want to measure it, well, what we do is we just pass it through a Stenger-Lack apparatus with this magnetic field pointing in the plus z direction. And we know from what we've seen in previous videos that this electron will deflect downwards with 100% probability. Now, this is in essence what a quantum circuit is. It's a series of operations performed at some given time to change the state of a quantum element. Now, in reality, performing all of these operations using all these Stenger like instruments and, and freezing the electron to apply the, the magnetic field to cause it to process, it's extremely complicated. And this is not really how quantum processors are implemented. But the idea is that a quantum circuit is basically a set of operations where you're changing the state of, of a quantum element. So to each of these operations, we can assign some abstract gate to represent them. So we can say now, let's draw this in, in a circuit diagram representation, where we say, okay, at the beginning, we have our electron in some unknown state. So I'm gonna just represent it again with this question mark. And then this first operation is usually known as post selection. And uh, we're not gonna talk about this in detail uh, for at least a, a few more videos. But the idea is that this works like a reset operation where we're guaranteed that after applying this gate, we, we always have a state zero here. Now, right after this, we know we're going to apply another operation whose at its output is gonna give us a state one. And we already know that this corresponds to the X gate, just like we have for classical reversible circuits. And then right after that, we have a measurement that is going to turn our quantum state into some classical output. Now in, in the diagram above, what I have is the electron into a screen where we're measuring that it's always deflecting in the minus Z direction. 
with 100% probability and you know in the plus z direction with 0% probability. Now in a quantum circuit we usually are going to associate these outcomes with classical bits. So we can say that for example if an electron is deflecting in the plus z direction that will correspond to a classical zero but in this case since it's always deflecting in the minus z direction we're always getting a classical bit of one here at the output. And these are basically the three types of operations we're always going to have in a quantum circuit. So we have a state preparation, we have some quantum operations, and we have measurement, which basically turn a quantum state into a classical outcome. So now let's go ahead and start coding this in Python with the help of Qiskit. So let's start by doing something very simple and let's just draw the exact same circuit we just discussed. So to do that, we're going to import from Qiskit the quantum circuit class, which is what's going to allow us to define circuits and simulate them. So to define a circuit, we use this class and we pass to it the number of qubits we're going to have in this circuit. So in this particular case, we're only gonna have one qubit. And then the number of classical bits that, where we want to store the outputs of a measurement. And then to append operations to our circuit, this quantum circuit object has methods with some predefined gates. And the ones we're going to use are fairly common. So, uh, for example, the first thing we want to do is to initialize our qubit in state zero. And we can do that with a reset operation. So we're going to apply that to qubit zero. So we only have one qubit and in Qiskit, everything is indexed starting from the number zero. Then we're going to apply our X gate also to qubit zero. And then we're gonna perform a measurement on qubit zero. And we want to store the result of that measurement in the classical bit zero. Now we can draw that circuit and we can see that this looks very much like what we described before. Now Qiskit by default always initialize our qubits in state zero. So this reset operation at the beginning of our circuit is, is redundant. So we're not gonna be using it anymore. Now, before performing a full simulation of the circuit, let's first just look at a circuit with only the X gate. So let's just create another circuit. Let's call it QCX with only one qubit, but no classical bits. And let's simply apply to it an X gate and draw it. So this is a lot simpler than what we have here. But what I wanna do is to show what the matrix associated with this gate is. So to do that, what I can do is now import from Qiskit quantum info, this operator class. And then if I define an operator object and pass this quantum circuit to it, when I display it, I can see the matrix associated with the circuit itself. And since all we have is this X gate, what we get is the matrix associated with the X or NOT gate that we have discussed so far. And if we wanted to, for example, evolve a state vector through this X gate, well, we can then import also the state vector class, which we cover in a previous video. And then for example, define cat zero to be the state vector uh, using the from label method and passing this symbol zero. And then this state vector object has actually a method called evolve to which we can pass the operator and see what uh, we get at the output. And as we know, the X gate negates this zero, so it will turn it into state one. So let's take a look and see if that's what we get. And similarly, we could define you know, ket one and again, evolve it through that X gate and get cat zero. Let's now look at a more interesting example for a quantum gate, and that is the Hadamard gate. So the Hadamard gate is a very special type of operation that takes state zero to state plus and state one to state minus, but more importantly, it also performs the reverse operation. So it turns state plus into state zero and state minus into state one. So 
To construct the Halimar gate, uh, we can do something very similar to what we've done before for classical gates. So we can say our Halimar gate H has some components H00, H01, H10, and H11. And what we can do is we know uh, what the inputs must be, either state zero and state one, and we know what the outputs have to be, either state plus or state minus. So we can just put in here the vector for state zero, which is one zero, and equate that to the state vector for state plus, which is square root of one over two and square root of one over two. And then that way, when we perform this operation, we can solve the equations to find all the coefficients. And of course, we will also need the, that second equation where instead of putting state zero here, we put state one and equate that to state minus. Now solving these two expressions results in a matrix for a Halamar gate that is root of one over two, root of one over two, root of one over two, and minus root of one over two. Now sometimes, or most times actually, I'm gonna write this as one over root two and then the matrix one, 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 minus one. And we can verify that if we multiply state plus and state minus with this matrix, we will recover state zero and state one. Now, the way one would implement this physically is similar to what we did here for the X gate, where we apply a constant magnetic field at some specific angle with respect to the spin of an electron. But in the case of the Halamar gate, it would just be at a different angle and of either different intensity or different duration so that we can guarantee that if we have, for example, spin in the plus Z direction, what we have at the output is a spin in the plus X direction and vice versa. So now let's go back to Qiskit and implement a circuit that uses the Halamar gate. So let's create a circuit with just a single Halamar gate. Let's call it QCH and it's gonna have one qubit. And to append a Halimar gate, we just use this dot h method and specify the qubit we want it in, and then we can draw our circuit. Let's make sure we use the right name here. And then we can see we have a single Halimar gate, and then we can create an operator from this quantum circuit. And if we now display it, we can see that the matrix we get is the same we just described. And we could also evolve our kit zero through this gate and that will give us state plus. So let's actually save it here. And similarly, we can do the same thing. If we evolve ket one, we should get ket minus. Let's see if that's the case and here we have it. But as we said, passing ket plus or ket minus through this gate should also recover states here and state one. So let's try that. So let's take ket plus and evolve it through a Halamar gate. And here we see we get state zero. Now, what we've done here so far is create a simple circuit with a single gate, generate an operator, and then create a state vector that we evolve with the matrix that we extracted from the circuit. But we really didn't simulate a full circuit where we initialize a state, pass it through the gate, and then perform measurements. So let's actually take a look and see how we can do that. Let's take this circuit we had defined here above and let's copy it down here again but let's just as, as we said remove this reset gate because in Qiskit all our qubits are always initialized at zero let's actually replace the x gate for a Halamar gate to make it a little bit more interesting now if we want to perform a simulation well we need a simulator to do so so what we can do is import from Qiskit providers basic provider we can import the basic simulator. And this is the simplest possible simulator we can have, but it allows us to just take that circuit and emulate what would happen if we would run it on a quantum computer. So what we do is we create a basic simulator object, let's call it just simulator, and then we can do simulator.run, pass the circuit we want to execute, and then the number of shots. So this is basically the number of times we're going to initialize our qubit, pass it through the Halamar gate and perform a measurement. So if you think about it, this is similar to the physical implementation we described before. So it would be like taking a, an electron with a random spin, making sure that it gets 
initialized with a spin pointing in the plus Z direction, then applying a magnetic field that will rotate its spin so it points in the plus X direction, and then sending it through a stenger like apparatus so that it deflects either upwards or downwards. Now, because we're applying a Hallamar gate and we're placing this in superposition, the expectation is that we will measure half of the time state zero and half of the time state one. So let's see if that's what happens. So, so let's call this our job. So that's gonna store the execution of the simulation. And then we can extract a result by doing job.result, which is going to have the number of counts of the results of executing this circuit a hundred times. So let's save that in counts. And we extract it by taking the result and using this get counts method. And then if we print our count, we get no classical register because we passed the wrong circuit. Uh, the, the one where we actually have the measurement is the one I called just QC, not QCH. So let's replace that. And now here we have it. We have a, a dictionary that is telling us that we measure state zero about 51 times out of 100 and then state one, one about 49 times. So that tells us that you know, our results are 50-50, state zero and state one. So I, I think this is where I'm gonna leave it at for this video, just because I don't wanna make it super long. But what I wanna do in the next video is actually do a comparison of the different ways in which we can simulate these quantum circuits. So we'll look again at a similar example using again the state vector, this basic simulator, and then we'll also use what is known as the sampler, which is a new type of simulator that Kiske recommends using because it matches more closely to the way we execute circuits and hardware. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.